I wouldn't say I experienced anxiety with the MRI. Um, it is a, kind of a tight, uncomfortable situation, but I just kind of let my mind wander and kind of just listen to the sounds. And it was kind of almost relaxing at some point once you got past the, the jarring sounds. I have to have an MRI. I know they are important because they give me the answers I'm looking for. They gave my doctors and I the answers we need. I have this really uh, excellent uh, calming music. They plug it in and I have a couple of Valium too. And it helps me to get through it. Hi, I'm Kate Milliken and welcome to MS Learn Online. Magnetic resonance imaging, better known as MRIs, are a common tool in the clinical diagnosis and care of people with multiple sclerosis. What exactly do health professionals learn from an MRI scan, and how does that information help care for people with MS? To answer those questions and more, we have Dr. George Kraft with us. Dr. Kraft is the Alvord Professor of MS Research and the Director of the Western Multiple Sclerosis Center at the University of Washington Medical Center in Seattle. Welcome to MS Learn Online, Dr. Kraft. Kate, I'm glad, glad to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. So let's just start with a simple question. What is an MRI? Oh, that's a, not a simple question. It's <laughs> a very complex and very expensive piece of equipment that can look into the body, all different organs, and can uh, give information to doctors depending on what the organ is. With regard to MS, the organ we look at is the brain. We also look at the spinal cord. But the, a brain, we can identify whether the patient has typical changes of MS. How does it work? It works by looking at the vibrations of the water molecules and tissue. And when there is inflammation, which is what the attack is, the, the, the initial attack of MS is inflammation around the nerves. Uh, the water molecules, there are more water molecules there and they vibrate more. So we're really looking at water. Why are MRIs a, an important diagnostic tool for people with MS? MS presents in a really typical way. And if you see that typical pattern, you have the diagnosis right there, it, it, especially if you have a pattern that clinically goes along with MS. And what exactly is the MRI measuring? I know it you is, said it's, it's measuring the water molecules, but what is it seeing? It's seeing little white lines that radiate from the ventricles, which are the spaces in the middle of the brain the, where the fluid goes. Just look, it looks like fingers. It's called Dawson's fingers, and we're looking for Dawson's fingers. So talk to me when someone says, oh, I had an MRI and I, I saw that there were three lesions. Mm -hmm, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, that means they hadn't really advanced to the point of having what we call Dawson's fingers, and it meant that they have little round or oval areas that are areas of demyelination, inflammation, more water, and that's what they're seeing. How often do you feel that people and patients with MS should have an MRI? Well, I believe everybody needs an MRI to have a diagnosis, first of all. You can't really make a diagnosis for sure without the MRI. And I'm uh, a strong believer, and have been for a long time, and probably was one of the first believers that a person needs an MRI of the upper part of the spinal cord, too, because a lot of lesions occur there. Once you have the diagnosis established in our practice, I believe that you need to do it about every two years. And the reason you do is because you can have hidden lesions that the patient isn't aware of. Uh, they're called silent. I don't believe they're silent because they're taking a toll on a person. They're impairing memory. They're impairing emotional stability. They're maybe causing depression. And we know it doing these things because depression and cognitive impairment are, are rather prevalent in MS. Right, so, um, but what you're saying is by taking an MRI, it's actually possible to see that there, there is activity happening in a way that may be affecting somebody's thinking. And the answer is that's correct. And the reason that's important is because you, we have so many good disease-modifying treatments available now that if you failed one, in other words, if you have new lesions that you're not aware of as a patient, it means you failed the, the drug, we have better options now. So you, you, you don't want those to get so bad uh, as to cause major problems. You want to pick them up when they're mild. So you uh, certainly nobody can dispute that the MRI is an extremely expensive machine. Yes. It also happens to be quite a claustrophobic one. And in, in my experience having an MRI, I was shocked on how close everything is, how loud it is. And it's a, it's a unique experience that some people find daunting and they feel a lot of anxiety about. Do you have any tips that you would give to patients who may be feeling that way? My tip is called Valium. <laughs> Great. And uh, doctors that you know uh, will probably, that is something that's very common for doctors to, yes. to, to prescribe. It's not unusual.
or someone who maybe no, no, wants no. something to calm no, them no. down. A patient is having a problem. Sometimes patients will want to have something called an open MRI, which means there's no uh, engulfment of a big uh, a machine case. But the quality is very poor in those, and I'd much rather give the patients something to calm them down and be in a good MRI to get a good quality MRI. A, a one-shot deal that, that will have lasting right. results for sure. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Kraft, for being here. Mm -hmm. If you would like to get more information on symptoms of MS, go to nationalmssociety.org. This is Kate Milliken for MS Learn Online. Thanks for joining us.